What's going on, everybody? Uh, Nuga here with another stream. This is an insanely uh, depressing song to start off the stream with, but that's okay. We'll survive. We'll make it. Uh, so today uh, is another intimidating day. We have the hair mostly out of the way for now. So we dodged one bullet, but now we are working with this structural part of the dress. And my biggest concern is the color. Um, it has to be a warm gray. I'm very afraid of it being muddy. Hey, what's up, Ates? How you doing? Having a good day? My day was not bad, busy, but not bad. And now it's a thousand degrees in my studio. Um, like always anymore, it seems like. So this dress is up next. My tape is not even sticking because it's so hot. Uh, so I have to be extra careful of that. But the color of this is going to be tough. It's gonna, I'm afraid it's gonna look like mud which is like a, a lifeless gray that comes from mixing too many paints together. So that's scary. We'll see how it goes. This is kind of out of my comfort zone. It's going to be direct painted, um, kind of. It's going to be similar in, uh, in method as the, the bottom part of the dress. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna stop worrying about this paint or this tape, and I'm going to figure out the color because I'm not sure. Okay, this could go horribly wrong. But, let me explain what I'm doing here. So, the dress, the lower part of the dress, this kind of muted blue, almost green color, is a mixture of essentially blue and orange. The orange is pulling the blue uh, more towards the middle of the color wheel. So, essentially we we're here with the blue, we added the opposite, which is somewhere here, and we pulled the blue down, which it's covered by white. Maybe I should use this side. Pulled it in this direction. We ended up with something kind of like that color there. Um, so, what I want to do is I kind of want the opposite on this end. So let me clear this out of the way. So, what I kind of want now is I want something kind of here, but even further towards the middle. So even more gray. So something about right here, uh, right here. So what I'm going to do is rather than use yellow, because that's already a bright color, I'm going to start with my burnt umber. So burnt umber is, if you haven't noticed already, the same color I'm using in the shadows of my indirect painting. So first thing I want to do kind of my starting point here is I want this to be cohesive, not look muddy, and I think starting with this is going to be a good starting point. Now we are going to change it, and rather than use our ultramarine blue uh, that we've used in this kind of blue-yellow, blue-orange mixture, 
we're going to use the warm blue or cool blue. I can never tell with blues which ones should be considered warm or cold. I don't know if anyone does. But anyway, I'm using my cerulean blue. So when we mix these, we should get a warm gray. I'm gonna start with mostly um, burnt umber, add a little bit of this cerulean blue until we get the color we want. So I'm going to also need a lighter variation. So we are going to be mixing some white into this. Specifically here, if you can see that, is going to be in highlight and this here is in shadow. I don't know if you can tell from the drawing, but this is a very structural um, bodice. I don't know if bodice is the right word for what this is, but uh, um, you'll see. It has very crisp edges. Um, it even has kind of a, uh, a lip. I don't know if that's the word, a trim on the corners. And it needs to look very, very clean. Now, I did say this was not muddy. However, this is a pretty grotesque color. If you were to look at this color, if this was like on a t-shirt, you would not want to wear it. But that is okay, because there's a difference between ugly and muddy. How long does it take uh, for oil paint to dry usually? Um, if it's thin and um, you're in kind of normal circumstances, you're using like either linseed oil or a standard painting medium, it'll dry to the touch in three to four days to about a week. But that's just dry to the touch. Uh, the underneath of it won't be dry uh, for weeks. Now, if you work with really thick paint, let's say you are like a post-impressionist, you know, mixing, you know, colors on a giant brush, uh, really spontaneously, really clump up the paint and put it on your panel. Thick paint like that can take years to completely cure in the middle. Because what happens is the outer edges will, um, I gotta be careful of this line thing going on here. Um, the outer edges will cure first and they will make a little pocket of gooey oil paint middle and because it's cut off from the outside air now air doesn't necessarily dry it like um like acrylic but the curing process is a chemical reaction to the air so you're cutting it off, it's kind of encapsulating itself. And that's why it can take so much longer for thick oil paint to, to cure. And in some cases, there, there are iconic paintings that still have, you know, wet layers underneath because they use such thick paint. And 
the important thing to keep in mind when you're working with oil paint is that when you finish your painting, you can't varnish the painting and protect it from dust, sun, uh, you know, oils and, and hands, um, you know, hair. You can't protect it if it's not varnished and you can't varnish it until the oil paint is completely cured, even the layers underneath. So a lot of the time you, if you're looking at a, an oil painting with very thick paint, you know, really obvious brush strokes, that painting is probably not varnished and it's probably you're probably not seeing it the way it was actually created because it just probably has a layer of just dirt from the air, which sounds gross, but it happens just from being hung on a wall. Things will start to, to brown and it's not even an acidity problem. It's just exposure to air will eventually brown oil paint. That's why if you work thin, you can varnish. And when you varnish, varnish can always be taken off and put back on. And you're always protecting that paint uh, underneath. So you have to know absolutely when your paint is cured or not. And that's not always easy unless you're working very thin like I do. I know for a fact that, you know, if I, if I have a stream on Monday and Tuesday, by the next Monday, my paint's going to be dry to the touch. I can tape it off. I can put my hand on it like this I did last week. It is completely fine. It's a little sticky, a little tacky, but it is dry. That paint isn't going anywhere. However, this is a little thicker right here. It is still dry to the touch, but you can tell it is tackier. Um, this, because it's so thin, I can touch it a little bit without having to worry too much. But if I push hard enough, I will pull some of that paint off. So, <laughs> uh, 20 minute story, uh, shortened into a simple reasonable answer uh it takes a week for thin paint could take up to two years for thick paint uh, and maybe even longer uh depending on how thick you go
I'm going to call the stream 15 minutes early. Uh, I'm going to have to jar up this paint, make sure I don't lose my mixture. And I will be ready to pick right back up next Monday. I am thoroughly exhausted. It's super hot. It's been a good stream. We made some progress. We finished this necklace. We did the shadows in this dress, which is taking way longer than I expected. That's okay. Um, not necessarily the most captivating stuff going on here, but I think it's going to pay off in the end. So, uh, just checking that shape real quick. Uh, I hope you liked the stream. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like if you liked and subscribe for more. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, if you are not following yet, please consider following and get your name on the wall. And I think that's all for me. I need to go take a nap. So thanks. Have a good week, everybody. Later.